I'm here in the Heinkel Trojan Club stands with Gary Longstaff, who is restoring a member's car. It's a Trojan? It is, yes. From which year? 1963, this one. It's okay. a, a late one. They only, they only made them up to 1965. Okay. So this is uh, a fine example. It's not as rusty as the older models, so it's been a much better restoration job. Okay. Um, we've, we've, we've and why are you it. restoring it? How, how, how do you know what you're doing? It's yeah. because I've had these cars since I was 18. Uh, I know everything about them now, so members tend to think, well, would you please help me with it? So you, you get involved, and it's it's a lovely it, it's a lovely experience meeting the people, helping them with the cars. We meet them at the shows. It, it's like one large family. It's so you've had these since you were 18. How many have you had over the years? I started off with two, and now I ended up with nine on the road and about three more to restore. Isn't that a bit excessive? Do you need 14 cars? Well, it's just enjoyable because they all have little individual, you know, quirks. quirks. All a bit quirky. And they're all different colours, so I enjoy having a colour, a different colour for each day of the week. And what's, what's the appeal of them? Why do you love them so much? They're, they're cute. People enjoy seeing you. They're, they're happy to see you. They handle like a little go-kart, and you just feel different. You just feel unusual uh, but fun. Right, yeah. So fun. what are they like to drive? I mean, what engine's it got? It's only a small engine, it's a single cylinder overhead valve. The early ones were 175, then they upped them a little bit more power to 200cc, but it's still only 9 horsepower. It's still, you work the engine, you work the gears, but you still get there. Uh, it's the old saying, slow but sure. Probably sounds like a strimmer at full chat, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's the history of the Heinkel Trojan? Well, basically, after the war, Heinkel, as a manufacturer, as Messerschmitt as well, they weren't allowed to make, obviously, well, weapons. So they went into, they'd already made, Heinkel were already making scooters, as they have, like Lambretta and Vespa. The Heinkel one was a better scooter. It had an electrical starter motor in it, built in. Oh, that's sweet. So, basically, Germany loved scooters. They still do. Uh, so the engine was perfect for putting in a little car, as it had the facility of a reverse. And so they ended up where they made these cars, but they wanted to get back to manufacturing aircraft. So as soon as they could, they transferred it all to Dundalk in, in Ireland. They manufactured them for a number of years, and then Minis came out in the early 60s. Sales fell, so they thought, well, we really ought to move it on, so they sold it to company called Trojan in Croydon in England and they continued making them and they even went into this model which is the right hand drive English version but minis were taking the market and sadly by 65 they were over nobody were buying them so they just discontinued and, and are there many left there is a lot left and we're still finding them that are in very poor condition because of them being made of steel very thin steel so they're now being restored because we have a firm up in West Yorkshire that make the body panels. Years ago, nobody could get hold of these panels, and so they were just scrapped. Now they're they're lovingly restored, welded up. So Once the body's done, you can get all the mechanical parts. Yeah. Get all the body. All the mechanical body parts. parts are still coming from Germany because they still have the engines in the scooters. Right. So we still get most of the engine stuff. We can manufacture stuff in this country, like the Perspex windows, which we actually sell to the German company. And so we actually work together with the German Heinkel Club. And they're a much bigger club than us, yes. because there's thousands of scooters. We don't have that many members. But they don't have thousands of cars. But they don't, no. They never bothered keeping the cars as much right. as we did. And there's, the cars are in Belgium and Holland. Some of those have four wheels as opposed to our three. But that was back to the taxation. So all the right hand drive cars with three wheelers? Yes, yes. And uh, basically, uh, they're simple. They're so simple to repair, uh, that's what makes people interested in doing it. There's no technical stuff in them. So they, even. They look pretty uncomplicated. Yes. <laughs> I like things simple. Like I can understand. Uncomplicated is good. Yes, yes. Is this a fabric roof that slides back? It falls back, it's a sunroof for when they get very warm in summer because they're like a greenhouse. Yeah, like a golfish bowl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then the good part of it is if you did go off road into a ditch, you wouldn't be able to get out the front door, you could get out the roof. <laughs> so That's your escape plan. That was it, yeah. Okay, so what's left to do with this? Not a lot now, we're just putting trimmings on. There's a, the windows are to secure, yeah, these are all to, to do right. Um, 
basically we have just about finished now and I know it runs the engine because I've had it in a test rig. So uh, are you ready to drive home this evening? It will run home, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it will run okay. You need a couple of weeks to get there. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. uh, 40 miles an hour. <laughs> 40 miles an hour, okay well good luck getting it finished. Thank and you, uh, it's been a pleasure. seeing your 14 cars on the road this year. Yes, it's well, been. nine at least. It's, okay, it's thanks Gary. It's a pleasure Gary. talking to you Richard, thanks. cheers, Bye. cheers.